I joined the Navy, I graduated last month uh, from college, and I knew I didn't want to depend on my dad for the, for the next couple of years, so I said I was going to join the Navy. But my mom, after high school, she told me I should try school, so I was like, okay, I tried. Didn't like it too much, so I came here. And then I was like, okay, I can make a better life for myself in the military. A lot of it was because I wanted to travel. And uh, just my parents, <laughs> my parents gave me a little nudge too. They, they was ready for me to go. I joined the Navy to provide a better life for myself and my son. Like um, being that I had him early, I wanted him to never have any excuses in life why he couldn't be something great. Within the eight weeks that I was here, I, I became a US citizen. And so now I can really say that I'm proud to be an American because I am an American. And um, that's a great experience for me. I, I, for that, I'm already in love with the Navy. I am one of the lucky ones as far as having my mother come to graduation and she, she's ecstatic. <laughs> she's like losing her mind already. She's, I, I don't think she's ever been this proud of me before. America's Navy doesn't simply hire people, send them through a graduation, and then put them on ships. First, these civilians must be trained. Welcome to Recruit Training Command, the Navy's only boot camp. The building I'm standing in is where you check in when you report to boot camp. It is called Golden 13. When you get off the bus, there are certain things that's going to be happening. It may seem chaotic, but there is a method to the madness. First, you're going to be staged in this large classroom where you'll have your height and weight taken. We also do a drug test. The Navy has a zero tolerance policy for drugs. So if you are taking drugs, you will be caught. It's not a matter of if, it's when, because you will be caught and you will be sent right back home. You also will get the opportunity to call home. We wanna make sure that your family members know that you made it safely to boot camp the cell phones, however, will be mailed back to the family members. We do not keep cell phones here at Recruit Training Command. Diddy bag issue. When you go into diddy bag issue, you will be able to get all the items that you need for the first week of training here at RTC. You'll receive your Navy PT gear, your sneakers, you'll receive toiletries, stationery so you can write back home, and in about a week or so, you should receive your Navy working uniform. So that's like the camouflage uniform that everyone sees. That's what we call your Navy working uniform. You'll be wearing those from week one until the end of training here at boot camp. The best advice that I can give you when reporting to boot camp is pack lightly. Any civilian items that you bring will be sent back home. This is the box that we use to send all your items back home. Everything else that you're going to need while you're in boot camp to survive boot camp, you will receive in boot camp. The red rope on Chief Lawrence's left shoulder identifies her as a Recruit Division Commander, or RDC. The RDCs pick up recruits the morning after night of arrival and introduce themselves by immediately taking recruits to the barber shop for haircuts. After haircuts, the recruits are given a final chance to bring up any past situations in their civilian lives who can come back to present a challenge in their new career. This last chance is referred to as the moment of truth. The moment of truth takes place within the first 24 hours of being received through RTC in processing. The opportunity to make a voluntary disclosure of information previously not included in a member's service record can make the difference in a legal determination of a fraudulent or erroneous enlistment. For recruits, Meeting their RDCs is the beginning of a relationship that will last for the next eight weeks. When you first meet your recruits, you have to let them know that you're in charge. And a lot of times that means that you have to yell at them. You have to let them know that, hey, you're going to discipline them and they're going to follow your instructions or they're not going to make it here. When we first get our recruits, the first thing we need to do is obviously get their attention. In the Navy, there's it's a stressful environment. You don't always have time to stop and explain why I need an individual to do what he needs to do. So the yelling gets them used to being in a stressful environment. It gets them, it gets their attention, obviously, but it brings their focus on where they need to be. Like, they don't know 
what's going to happen the very next minute because there's so much pressure put on them as soon as they get here to see if they're going to crack under the pressure. But it's not meant to break you. It's meant to make you stronger. Boot camp is designed to be stressful. Everything we do here is for a reason. And everything that we yell at a recruit for is for a reason. Everything that we emphasize is for a reason. So nothing that we ever say to you is ever personal. Once the divisions are formed, recruits move into their permanent barracks, referred to as ships, to begin their training. The ship includes study spaces with computers, a galley, and some other services recruits may not expect. Um, everything, that, everything that the recruits see when they come to boot camp is a mere image of what they're going to see when they hit the fleet. And so here at, here at RTC Great Lakes, we have on any given week about 31 different services. And, uh, and if they're not religious, um, that, that's okay too. Um, I tell sailors and Marines all the time, and I tell the recruits here, um, if you're not religious, that's okay. Please come see me because I care about you as a person. I care about your heart, and I care about your, uh, your mental and emotional well-being. And so I'm here to help you get through this because boot camp is rigorous, and it's not easy. Recruits can be assigned to all-male, all-female, or integrated divisions. So in an integrated division, basically you have 88 recruits, 44 female and 44 males. Now, the way that works for training purposes is they train all day together. But when it comes to uh, their sleeping quarters and the place where they hygiene, that's separate. So we have what's called a brother division. So there is another division of 88 recruits, 44 females and 44 males, that lives directly across the hallway from the other division. And whenever they need to uh, hygiene or whenever they need to go to sleep, they, they integrate. So you'll have all 88 males um, in one house and 88 females in the other. So P days are the processing days that actually come before training really even starts. The recruits are getting their shots and their dental checkups. Um, they're getting their fit for full duty stamps. They're learning how to stamp and stencil, getting all their gear ready for training. During those initial few weeks of training, recruits are instructed on how to stand at attention, salute, and address superiors. Drill, marching, and personnel inspections are also stressed. Another aspect of initial training includes learning a completely new vocabulary. When we're transforming civilians into sailors, the recruits need to learn new Make Navy sure customs and vocabulary. They need to learn different words for things that they commonly know from day to day. For example, recruits at boot camp don't wear underwear, they wear skivvies. The floor is now a deck, the walls are now bulkheads. How many times do I need to tell you guys that there is no bathroom here at Recruit Training Command? In the Navy, we have heads. While the recruits are occupied in the preliminary stages of transitioning from civilian to sailor, they should also be prepared for the two most important aspects of recruit training, the basic swim test and physical training. Recruits are taught water survival skills to help them stay afloat and survive in open water and are required to step off a 10-foot tower and swim the length of the 50-meter pool. Recruits may use any of the basic swim strokes, including front, breast, elementary backstroke, or side stroke. In addition, they must be able to float in the prone position for five minutes. The swim qualification test, like the jumping off the, the tower, was horrible for me. Because I've always, always, always been afraid of height. It was horrible. I just, but I told myself I didn't want to come back, so I got the courage and I did it. If recruits do not know how to swim, the RTC staff will teach them. However, basic swimming skills upon arrival will be beneficial. When you come to boot camp, you need to be ready. Let me break it down to you as why it's so important for you to know how to swim when you come to boot camp. When you don't know how to swim, you have to go twice a day, every day, to extra swimming classes so you can get up to speed with everybody else. In that time, we're doing a whole bunch of training that you're missing out on because you're going to extra swimming classes. So while I'm training, you're missing out, then you have to come back and play catch up, which could possibly set you back in training because you're not up to speed with the rest of your division.
In addition to being tested on swimming, recruits are also evaluated and eventually tested on physical training capabilities. These include push-ups, sit-ups, and a mile and a half run. Recruits will participate in three physical fitness assessments, or PFA, during their stay in boot camp. Put very simply, and for a sure recipe for success, follow this plan. If you arrive at boot camp with basic swim skills and can pass your PFA, traditionally you will have a much easier time completing boot camp. They get here and they know they're going to have to run a mile and a half because they, it says that on their contract. But they get here and they can't even make one lap around the track. And it's 12 for a mile and a half. So really the, the thing to do if you're joining the Navy is to uh, get in the pool, get familiar with the water, be able to pace, uh, pass a uh, basic swim test, and be able to run a mile and a half and do sit-ups and push-ups. It's not... It's really not that hard if you practice. It's going to be really hard if you come here and have never even tried. Navy physical training is stressed not only through each stage of boot camp, but throughout your entire Navy career. Navy PFA standards for male and female recruits in different age groups are available at all Navy recruiting offices and are also posted on the Recruit Training Command website at www.bootcamp.navy.mil. As training moves on, as a recruit, you are constantly reminded about attention to detail. From the simplest of tasks, such as making beds, stenciling, and folding clothes while properly stowing them in your bed, or rack, to the proper manner to wear your uniform, attention to detail are three words recruits hear from day one until graduation. Attention to detail is just uh, one of the main important things that keep the Navy functioning because there's so many uh, things that we do that's very, very detailed very, very intricate, and one, one thing really affects the other. You pay attention to detail, it, it tells them that you, you know what you're doing, you're comprehending everything that they're saying, um, you, you actually have a better understanding than you actually thought, like, so when you go out into the fleet, you, ain't, you won't get yourself hurt or anybody else hurt or possibly killed out there. By choosing to join the U.S. Navy, a recruit embarks not only on a job, but a new lifestyle. Because of these changes, you can expect challenges. These challenges come not only from the physical side, but the mental aspects of boot camp also provide struggles. I think the main reason recruits drop out of training is basically due to the fact that they've never really been away from home and they're missing their family. This is probably their first job. So they've never had a job, they've never had anybody telling them what to do. So the combination of those things, especially if their parents they have kids at home or spouses that they left behind. When you take all those things and you combine them, you get a really stressed out young person and they have people yelling at them and that combination is not good and they just want to quit. I would tell them to train hard, like make sure their mind is mentally focused. Like emotionally and mentally you have to be focused because boot camp is all a mental thing. You can't let your emotions get too in touch in this because if your emotions are too soft, you're not going to last in boot camp because it's meant to be stressful. It is important for recruits to remember that enlisting in the Navy is a significant lifestyle change. It takes time to adjust to the new environment. In general, recruits adjust to the rigors of boot camp within 7 to 10 days, but each recruit is different. There are, however, some trials and tribulations among recruits that are similar. Uh, common adjustment issues for recruits when they arrive at boot camp include poor sleep, change in appetite, um, also having feelings of homesickness, and understanding that you're being asked to become a team and with people who you don't know, um, but eventually you will form to be a team. Um, you will also probably experience feelings of second guessing your decision to enlist. These are perfectly normal and healthy feelings and just acknowledging the fact that you are homesick and experiencing that can help alleviate any fears or anxiety that you may have. There may still be situations that test a recruit's resolve. This is where the RDCs step in and become more like mentors and teachers, reminding recruits to stay focused even in the hardest of times. So I walked in the office my second weekend. I talked to Petty Office about I had a homeboy that died while I was up. I had got a phone call, my first phone call I had. I found out one of my friends got shot. One of those who was in the little crew that we hung out with, he was uh, on the wrong side of town, he got killed. So it hit me, it hit me hard to the point to where I kind of shed some tears, it hurt, 
because I'm here and a part of me felt like if I'd have been home, it wouldn't have happened. I think a lot of times the recruits don't understand that we're people too, that we have feelings. We go, we, we come from hoods. We come from rich areas. We come from actually all of the same places they come from. So um, I think that when they when they talk to us sometimes, they may think that we don't understand. And that's that's the thing that that's the exact opposite. I totally understand. I understood where he was coming from. I understood that um, the problems and the tribulations that he was going through because some of those things were my own. When I told the pet officer, the pet officer told me if it had been if I'd have been home, I could have been dead too. So therefore I took that when he said that, I was like, you know what? You're right. So I thought about it, he talked to me, he said, I gotta be the one that makes a difference for the hood. I gotta be the one that shows no matter what you go through in life, you can't make a difference. Recruits begin to notice after the first few weeks of training that the climate begins to change. And when you really see the light bulbs come on on them, it's, it's kind of neat because you go more in from a, you having to discipline them all the time to it's easier to correct the deficiencies. And instead of large group corrections, it's more you're just picking out the little, the small groups that need to get fixed. During the fourth week of training, recruits actually leave the ship and receive hands-on training in small arms, firefighting, and ship and line handling exercises. While we were training for small arms, it was, for me, it was the first time that I've actually really, um, I guess, practiced, you know, with the positioning of the weapon. And what was good about it was that the RDCs were able to help me um, with my grip and, you know, getting to the different positions. Um, if we had any questions, they were able to answer it. Firefighting was cool because that was my, actually my first time actually having to fight a fire like that. You had the teams and everything pretty much was teamwork. And as long as everything boot count has been teamwork and firefighting, that's when most of that came in there too. And the Marlin Spike, Marlin Spike was really cool. I like, like the uh, handling the lines, you know, it was, it was a little nerve wracking, you know, because you're, you're being put on the spot, you know, right up there, you know, you're tested right away. While training becomes more hands-on and exciting for recruits, the physical aspects of training continue, including the second of the three PFAs. Finally, recruits find themselves progressing rapidly towards their final overall evaluation, known as battle stations. Battle Stations is an intense 12-hour exercise involving 17 different shipboard scenarios. Battle Stations is the ultimate test of what they have learned over the course of their training and evaluates not only their knowledge and capabilities, but their ability to function as a team. You hear little brief things like watching YouTube videos and all that stuff, like what's, what's it's like, what it's like when truly the YouTube's videos don't show you half of it. It's it's, it's stressful, but quite a bit of excitement with it. You don't know what's going to happen next. Everything that you learn throughout boot camp, you pretty much get to use during battle stations. Uh, when, we got, when we got to battle stations, I think that all the little things that we learned in boot camp really came into play. And the key thing that came into play was the attention to detail. I think the most important thing of all of this that we did was the idea of teamwork. You have to have teamwork. You you can never. If you're gonna if you are gonna become a sailor, in the, in the future, if you have a, 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 an ambition to be a sailor, you gotta let go of that ego, and you have to learn to work as a team. Once the arduous night of battle stations is successfully completed by recruits, they are formally welcomed into the Navy the following morning. Physically exhausted after their grueling night, recruits trade in their recruit ball caps for new Navy ball caps. This capping ceremony is often emotional, as the recruits realize that after eight weeks of hard work, they have successfully completed boot camp. You can finally call yourself a sailor, and when they play that video, and when you say that, you know, Sailor's Creed, you know, it made me want to cry, but I didn't cry. Boot camp was really hard for me. I was really homesick. I've never been in a situation like this. I've never gotten told where, what to do, where to go, how you're supposed to look. And that capping ceremony was just like the symbol that everything was done. We, we finished, we did it. Like that's the biggest accomplishment is being able to put that cap on and say, hey, I'm a sailor. The recruits are now officially sailors. Besides the building process in which sailors are provided the opportunities to broaden their horizons, not only professionally, but personally, recruits also found some interesting life lessons, which they may not have anticipated when training began. 
We do mentoring topics throughout the eight weeks of training. And about halfway through, we have a topic about diversity and we have another topic about teamwork. It's interesting to watch the recruits and the way they interact with each other, um, opposed from the way that they interacted with them with each other initially. Uh, we start asking them about you know where they're from and if they have people coming from overseas for graduation, and a lot of them you know are coming from Africa and all these different countries, and um, they don't have anybody coming to graduation, and that is when they first learn that really the Navy's a family. And they all look and say, it's okay, you can come with my family on graduation day. And it is it is great to see the way that they just kind of embrace each other when they wouldn't even look at each other or speak to each other in the beginning. So it's an amazing progression. Uh, the Navy is a, a melting pot. Um, it's, a, it's a one diverse area, and, it's, and you pack a whole bunch of people from a whole bunch of different uh, countries and cities and states, and you pack them into one area. The Navy is not about uh, black and white or colored. It's, it's a group of people that actually say, you know what, I care about you because you're a sailor. And because you're a sailor, now you are like my brother, or now you're my sister. And they merge them together and you get like this amazing thing where you find people that are like totally two different, you know, two different, play, uh, two different areas and now they're like the best of friends, you know. So it's a good thing. I, I like it. When I talk to recruits about diversity, I tell them about myself. Because I wasn't born in the United States, I was born in Colombia, so therefore, I'm a naturalized citizen. Diversity is what makes this Navy so great, because we have so many things to offer. We have so many things to bring to the table. Everyone can bring something to the table from their different backgrounds, from their cultures, from where they grew up, their ideas, everything. Now, with a focus on their upcoming graduation, Recruits can look back and remember the beginning of boot camp. Their initial impressions of their RDCs have changed significantly. Those loud voices that promoted dread, fear, panic, and alarm have, over the course of eight weeks, changed into voices of understanding. And the people behind those voices have changed into mentors, teachers, and perhaps, sometime in the near future, shipmates. She's, well, what she put off to us was kind of what I feel like a female in Navy should be as far as like she's very respectable and just class she's she's good at what she does and definitely a great role model to females in the Navy as far as what you need the standard that you need to hold to yourself I think highly of Petty Officer Kramer because every time like that I would get in trouble when he would scream at me and I would go through this emotional thing and cry. He would always like come and explain to me why he screamed at me and why, why I shouldn't do what I was doing and basically what I was doing wrong and how, like, how not to get yelled at again. Tough love, like the dad I never had, so. To be honest and truthfully, Pitt House College reason why I survived boot camp. The first two weeks here, he grilled me, he got on my face, he pushed every piece of hood mentality that I had on my head as he Drilled it, Pedalski kept telling me, Nelson, keep your head up. Nelson, I'm gonna get on to you because I know you're better than that. And to hear somebody tell you that you're better than that when your whole life you heard that you nothing, it feel good. Recruit graduation is at hand. The eight weeks of training are concluded and the transformation from civilian to sailor is complete. Family and friends of the fleet's newest and sharpest sailors join the graduation celebration as sailors proudly don the uniform recognized throughout the world as a symbol of liberty and freedom. So on graduation day, after they walk after they walk in to the drill hall, that's a really proud moment. But the best moment is actually when the parents come up and they're thanking you and they're seeing their child in a in a totally different light. They don't even recognize them. First of all the haircut, second of all they're standing tall wearing a shiny new uniform properly and they're looking at the RDC like, wow, how did you do this? <laughs>